Hi Gal, uh, today I'm going to be talking about two things. The first one is a damage stability booklet and the other thing is damage control plans. Uh, the notes are written in a bit odd order. So let me just take you through what is a damage stability booklet first and then I'll talk about damage control plans. So before I start with the contents of the damage stability booklet, let me just tell you what damage stability booklet is all about. All right. So again, like I said, the notes are a bit up and down here. So damage stability booklet uh, is provided to the master of the ship. He is supplied with reliable information as is necessary to enable him or her by rapid and simple means to obtain accurate guidance as to the stability of the ship under varying conditions of service. This information that is supplied shall include firstly a curve of minimum operational GM versus draft that assures compliance with the applicable intact stability requirements. The second thing that information should provide or include is a corresponding curve of maximum allowable vertical center of gravity that is kg that is the distance from the keel to the center of gravity of the ship a curve of that a curve of the kg is plotted against the draft of the vessel differing drafts with differing values of kg then the information also includes a tabular that is in the form of tables or equivalent presentations it could be graphs or tables of the above of these curves so the two curves that i mentioned in point a and b that would also be represented in some kind of a table or graphical form which is easy to interpret and understand and follow so apart from the numbers something like that as well all right then number four Instructions concerning the operation of cross flooding arrangements. So if there is cross flooding, so in case there is ingress of water in the compartments and uh, it starts to spread across compartments, that is called cross flooding. And finally, all other data and aids which might be necessary to maintain the stability after the damage. So if I can sum it up for you guys, these are the five information required curve of minimum operational GM versus draft corresponding curve of maximum allowable kg plotted against the ship's drafts and various drafts of course a tabular representation of these two in form of tables or graphs then cross flooding arrangements and any other information that is applicable now I go back to the top of my notes again to show you how these are used. So let's start talking about how it is used. And before I do that, I'll show you what are the contents of a damage stability booklet. So the contents of the booklet, sorry, the contents of the damage stability booklet include first is the introduction to the booklet. So it explains the purpose of the booklet and what it contains. The second is the principal dimensions of the vessel its spaces, cargo spaces, tanks, so on and so forth. So ship related principal dimensions. Then the damage assumptions. What would happen in varying cases of damage or flooding or hole or ingress of water. The minimum survival criteria required. So what is the GM required for vessels in varying conditions? What is the kg required? Then a description of damage cases. What is considered as damage? Then margin line data, the procedure to investigate damage stability, and the procedure method for maximum allowable kg curve and the corresponding minimum required loading weights. Then an example of a calculation is provided. And finally, the appendices where the graphs or curves are provided as well. So how do you carry out an investigation of damage stability? For example, make the desired loading plan, 
based on your current loading conditions. The next step is to investigate the trim of the vessel, the draft, the propeller immersion and the intact stability criteria where your maximum allowable kg should be greater than your allowable actual kg. If draft is above x meter, the value of which will of course differ from ship to ship, then ensure that weights loaded in cargo tanks against the table showing minimum required loading weights at various drafts is checked and the actual weight should be greater than the minimum weight required. The next step after that is go to the maximum allowable kg curve with the kg corrected for the free surface effect and the draft of intact stability condition regardless of trim and then there are two scenarios. I'll show you what the curves look like in a drawing below. If kg is found to be in stable zone then the vessel will survive, you are fine, no need to take any action. If kg is not in the stable zone, it is in the unstable zone, then calculate the maximum allowable kg value by linear interpolation with trim of intact condition. If this calculated allowable kg is less than the actual intact kg, vessel may not survive. However, if it is greater than the actual intact kg, the vessel will survive. So again, uh, I don't have access to the damage plans. Otherwise, I would have shown you what a damage stability booklet looks like. I hope to get it one day. But this is what the maximum allowable kg curve pretty much looks like. Where you can see on one axis, the kgs are plotted against the various values of draft. And then of course, depending on these values and the trim of the vessel, you can enter these tables. And there are zones that are defined as a stable zone for the vessel and unstable zone. And in damage stability condition, you have to find out where your vessel is lying, the value, the kg of the vessel against the draft plotted for the values of trim. And then if you are lying in the unstable zone, then you have to make the checks that I described above. If you are lying in the stable zone, then of course your vessel is still safe even after the flooding has taken place. So guys, I hope this was useful to you. But before I finish this video, I want to talk about damage control plans because sometimes people get confused between damage stability booklet and damage control plans. So damage control plans are required as per the SOLAS convention or the safety of life convention. And they are permanently exhibited or they are readily available on the ship's bridge for the guidance of the officer in charge of the vessel. The plans show clearly for each deck and each hold, firstly, the boundaries of the watertight compartments. Secondly, the openings therein with the means of closure and position of control thereof. And thirdly, the arrangements for the correction of list due to flooding in any of these compartments. So both of these plans and the booklet, they are all provided to the officer on watch to manage if there is any hole in the ship or if there is any uh, ingress of water due to a collision or some other reason, then both of these plans and booklets are provided to the officer on watch or the chief officer to manage the stability of the vessel, especially when the vessel starts to take in water or there is cross flooding of the departments or the cargo holds or tanks. So guys, let me know what you thought about this video. My apologies to you that I could not produce the actual stability booklet and plans. I don't have access to it at the moment. I hope to get it one day and then I'll pick up a video and show you actually what they all look like. Thanks guys and bye for now.